everydaygamers.com. Hey guys, it's Tom from everydaygamers.com, and I just got a chance to watch the uh, E3 presentation from Microsoft that aired today, um, obviously live. But um, I, unfortunately, I was at work today, so I didn't get a chance to watch it until just recently. So I know this is a little bit late um, in the evening, and actually we're in the AM now here, at least on the East Coast. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and just share with you guys some of my thoughts, go through some of the announcements that, announcements that Microsoft had. And I figured I would do a couple videos, you know, one for each of the major um, video game companies out there, well the video game console manufacturers out there, you know, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, and just give you guys my opinion and overall rating. But first, I'll run through what they announced, give a little bit of an impression on it, uh, you know, hopefully a quick impression because I have a lot to go through. And then at the end, I'll just give you what my overall feeling was and opinion um, and probably like, a, you know, a letter grade or, or a grade on, on the show and, and what I thought. Um, the company did. If you see me looking down, it's because I just made some notes and I just wanted to go through some of the things that were announced. And I hope, you know, that I don't miss anything. If I do, you know, bear with me, forgive me, um, you know, because there is a lot that they obviously showed. So, first of all, Microsoft opens up the show with um, Rock Band Beatles. To me, it was, you know, it's okay. Um, you know, I, I like the Beatles as much as anybody else, I, I guess. I mean, I know there's a lot of Beatles fans out there, but um, it wasn't anything groundbreaking to me. I, you know, it's another rock band game. Uh, the Beatles have a lot of great songs, and it, it'll be a game that anybody who likes rock band or guitar hero will probably want to go out and purchase on day one. For me, it's something that, um, you know, it all depends on, on the time frame and what else I'm playing at the time. I like rock band a lot, too, but... Uh, you know, there's a lot of other games that I enjoy playing more so than Rock Band. So, uh, you know, to open the show with that, that's okay, because, uh, you know, at least they didn't, they saved some of their bigger things for the end. We'll get to that later on. Um, then they showed something kind of interesting. Uh, I believe the second thing they showed was the new Tony Hawk game. And uh, basically with that Tony Hawk game, there's actually a board peripheral, which, uh, it, no wheels on it, no attachments, but it's a skateboard that you sit on the ground. It looks a lot like the Wii Fit Balance Board. Um, and it, you know, the way it interacts is it's got some sensors on the side. It also, you know, somehow detects, you know, the way your body's uh, shifted on there and the weight, how the weight's distributed. So it looks like it may be interesting. I don't know if it's something that's going to um, function really well. I guess we'll have to wait and see till, you know, wait, wait and see uh, some of the uh, press opinions, some of the opinions from people who get a chance to play it. Um, you then had Final Fantasy XIII shown for the first time on the 360. For me, not a big deal. Um, I'm a Final Fantasy fan. However, uh, I'll naturally probably pick this up for the PlayStation 3. It's just, to me, it, it, it kind of belongs on the Sony console. Although I'm happy that Microsoft gamers or people who only own a 360 are going to get a chance to play this game. Um, and, and, you know, RPG fans, I think it's good overall. Um, but it, to me, it wasn't a big deal to see that game in, in action. Uh, they just showed show a quick battle sequence. So that was, uh, to me, it just felt like, so what? Um, after that, you got some Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Um, well, actually, I guess it would just be Modern Warfare 2 uh, gameplay footage. Looks really good. It was um, all in-game. Um, you know, they chose to show this snow level, and I guess just to kind of show off a little bit of the graphical capabilities of the game. We already know the game's going to be great. Uh, they did announce that there's going to be two maps uh, exclusively available for the 360. To me, um, I was already going to buy it on the 360 only because of some of the natural things. Like, I have a lot of friends who play on the 360. I think the online experience is a, a lot smoother for third-party titles. You know, not you know, that's excluding first-party titles, I think, play well on the PlayStation 3 online. But uh, I felt like that, uh, you know... I was going to get it for the 360, so I don't care about the fact that they're giving you the two maps. More my issue is why haven't they supported the first game. Um, but, you know, for them to show the gameplay footage, I thought it was cool. And uh, to me, it was just another thing that seemed natural. It seemed like they were going to show it anyways. Um, next thing we saw was Shadow Complex. And this is a game 
um, with Cl Cliff Cl uh, Blazinski, he's involved in it, and uh, obviously Epic Games. It's like a 2D game, kind of almost uh, has this feel of Castlevania uh, to it, and they, they even said something about Ca Castlevania and Metroid being inspirations for this game. It's got this old school 2D vibe with like a, a 3D element in it, almost like uh, how Klonoa plays on the Wii and, and obviously on the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. It looks pretty interesting. It's going to be a download uh, title, title, so it's going to be an Xbox Live arcade title. Um, looks pretty good and uh, should be a, an interesting game. Then they went through some of the other games that you know are going to be available as well. Uh, one of the games they kind of hit on was Joyride, which is uh, basically an, an avatar involved game um, looks like a car racing game it's going to be free for download but it looks like it's a game that's going to involve a lot of microtransactions and they're going to try to nickel and dime you to death with this one so to me it wasn't a big deal not a big announcement um, we then saw Crackdown 2 which looks like it has a new development studios I think before it was real time worlds or I can't remember off the top of my head but it's um, I think Ruffian is, is a the company that's doing this one now. Um, it looked a little bit darker than the first game because the first game to me had more of a comic book style. It was really lighthearted um, in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways, I guess it was kind of um, dark. I mean, there was a lot of blood, there was a lot of guns, a lot of shooting. But uh, that overall cell shaded look kind of toned it down for me. This one looked a little bit darker, and I don't know. I'll definitely be picking it up on day one because I love Crackdown 1 so much, and I'm just looking forward to see what they do with Crackdown 2. Uh, then we saw an interesting announcement, at least to me it was interesting, Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, the reason why I think this is interesting is because it seems like it's so soon. Uh, you know, I would have rather seen more, um, more added to the first game, like some more expansion, stuff like that. Why not just keep on adding on to that? Because I felt like, um, while I love the first game a lot, they could have added so much more to that. And they, they could have included a lot more.